Yo, what is going on guys, Sirius here. In today's video, we're going to be starting the fifth video in the GSD scripting series. This is going to be the second part of the menu base series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, go ahead and do so, because you're going to need the code that we built in the previous videos. Today, we're going to be working on basically some, some really simple stuff. We're going to add a, a background and a title to our menu. Uh, it might be a quick video, it might not. Uh, it just depends on how the uh, how long it takes me to explain the HUD functions. But anyway, uh, don't forget you're going to need the latest version of my utility GSC. It'll be linked in the description. And let's go ahead and get started coding. So if you remember from the last video, uh, we got our iPrintLine bold working uh, with our open and close menu. Well, we want to make an actual menu, not a iPrintLine bold. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, iPrintLine bold. And we're going to actually change this if statement to have brackets because we want to do different stuff. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste that into there. I'm going to add more brackets and cut and paste this. And then I'm going to delete this line. Is it Control K? It's Control D. It's Control D. Okay. So uh, now that we have this basic if statement, uh, we're going to go ahead and use our first HUD function. Uh, so if you guys have never seen a HUD function, it looks something like this. Uh, there are all sorts of different ones. There is a default one. If you want you want to use the default one, you can, but the parameter order is going to be different. Um, you can see whenever you go to add a file, there's a utilities file that'll have the default HUD functions. So if you're used to using those, go ahead and add that back and just, you know, nab them. Otherwise, just use my utility. Uh, I set up the parameter order and explain everything. So um, if you want to use that, use that. Um, and I also use some uh, in-game functions that people weren't previously using uh, for whatever reason. So anyway, uh, we are going to create a background shader, uh, which means we're going to need to use the icon function. When I say shader in this game, a shader is just an image uh, in Computer graphics, it means it's a set of instructions to draw something, but uh, for the purposes of GSC, just think of it as an image. That's why I named the function icon. You can see we have quite a few parameters. We've got the shader name that we want to use, the X and Y position, the width and height, the color, the alpha, which is just basically the transparency, the sort, which is uh, like if you were to be stacking shaders on top of each other, it's like the order in which to draw them. So a higher sort means it gets drawn last and that means that it it goes uh, on top of everything else. And then you have the align and relative which are used to position it based on its X and Y. So like the align is essentially the uh, align is how they align the element to its position. So uh, like if you put center it would take half of the width and height uh, away whenever adding it so that it would basically be centered on the po the X and Y position you gave it. Uh, it's kind of complicated. Just play around with it if you want to learn how that works. Uh, relative is basically where it's going to be positioned on the screen. So if we do top center or center, uh, you know, we'll get it near the center of the screen or the top. Uh, then we have the is level function or the is level thing, which you don't need to worry about for a menu base. All right, so let's go ahead and oh, we're, we want to do a couple defines really quickly. If you've never used defines before, they're really simple. They're just like basically global variables. Um, if you are using GSC Studio for this, uh, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, only GSX Studio and Infinity Loader will be able to do this. And GSX Studio has a different syntax. You just don't need the equal sign whenever you define something. Uh, this is going to basically allow us to change variables up here instead of having to change them in the function. So like if we wanted to change the color of the base or the alpha or whatever, we would do it up there instead of in here, which is really useful. Um, and you don't have to do this. You could just put the values in there if you want, but I would probably suggest doing these defines. So let's go ahead and do this really quickly. Define mbg underscore color. It's going to be equal to 000. That is the black color. Uh, if you are not familiar with RGB, uh, RGB normally goes from 0 to 255, and it's the amount of red, the amount of blue, then the amount of green. In uh, Call of Duty, they actually scale it, so it's 0 to 1. So uh, same 
amount of red, amount of green, amount of blue, but they do it from uh, zero to one. So if you're putting in your typical 255 or you know zero X FF, whatever, whatever, it's not going to work. Uh, you're going to need to scale it. You go ahead and define MBG underscore shader is going to be equal to white. White is the default shader. Uh, it is basically just like drawing a rectangle on the screen. Uh, one thing we're going to want to do before we move on, we're going to need to do something in our init function called precache shader. Precache shader is going to load the shader that you want before the game starts. You have to do this before there's any wait in the game. You can't do it in the middle of the game. And this is required every time you use a new shader because the game needs to know to load it on the clients and if you don't precache it it won't load on the clients and so you won't be able to use it we're going to go ahead and do hash define mbg alpha and i'm going to use 0.93 this is going to be the transparency of the background 0.93 it goes from 0 to 1 so 0.93 is uh, pretty pretty opaque, but um, you can do whatever you want. Obviously, it's your menu base, uh, but 0.93 is a pretty good value for this. And then we're going to add a another define m text color is equal to one one one. That is obviously white because it is full RGB, and this is black. And again, you can change it to whatever you want. As long as you leave the, the name the same. Text alpha is equal to one because we want the text to be completely opaque. However, you can choose whatever you want. And keep in mind, you can do this define system with any variable you want in your menu. I would just recommend uh, doing it for constants that you're, you potentially might want to change. The reason we're doing it with color and alpha and things like that and the shader is because that's one thing that that's a set of things that people love to change in their menus. So I just want to make sure that it's easily accessible for people who want to uh, change this. Keep in mind whenever you're designing a menu base as well, specifically that other people are going to be using it after you. So you need to make things easy for them to use. A lot of people won't be watching this series. And so if you design a menu base based off of this series, you're producing it for other people and you want them to be able to use it. And a lot of the time, you know, people are not willing to learn. They just want to basically pop the base in, pop some managed code list in and release it, which I'm not going to comment on that, but if you're going to release a menu base, just keep those, uh, keep those kinds of menus in mind whenever you're designing it, because otherwise people won't use your base. Okay. So, uh, now we're going to go back to our set menu open function, uh, and we are going to add self set menu open false. Uh, you might be thinking, wait a minute, how can we call the function from inside the function? Isn't that a bad thing? As long as it doesn't call itself over and over and over again, like there's some kind of logic that prevents it from doing it, it's okay. For example, when we call false, this will never happen. So this will never happen twice. Basically, it'll, if we come in true, we're going to call it again, and then go and we'll go to this else statement. So that's okay. However, if we did true, it would crash the game. So you just got to be careful with that. But we're doing that because we're going to destroy some shaders and we want to make sure that they don't get drawn twice. Self.mbg equals self icon. And you can go ahead and just tab down and press the tab key. And it'll put all that there because we'll want to fill these in one at a time. Uh, go ahead and get rid of the level parameter. Let's go ahead and put the shader as mbg shader. Go ahead and add a space. We'll do x position is negative 10. Y position is 10. The width is going to be 100 or 200. And the height is going to be 300. Keep in mind, you can play around with those. You can do whatever you want uh, with these parameters. I'm just giving you some defaults that I tested that I liked. And this is not going to be anything crazy. It's not going to be a subversion, which is extincts menu base. It's not going to be anything like that, but uh, it'll be useful. And hopefully this will teach you more about making a menu base. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, BG alpha. Oh. Uh, then we need the sort 
We're going to put this at zero, which means it's basically in the background. We're going to change the align to be top right. And we're going to change this, this relative to top right. Okay. So as you can see, that's a very long function, but uh, this is pretty common. So you just kind of got to deal with it. There's a lot of properties to set for a, for a HUD element. Uh, so what this is going to do is this is going to align it at the top right of the element and at the top right of the screen, and it's going to go left 10 units for the X position. Negative means left, positive means right, and then it's going to go down 10 units. Uh, positive means down and uh, negative means up. And it's going to draw it for 200 units to the left because we are aligning it by the right and 300 units down because we are aligning it to the top. Uh, this can get complicated very fast, so I would recommend you stick with the same alignment for every element you use. Um, but just keep this in mind that uh, this is kind of a, a pain. So uh, whenever you're making a base, uh, aligning the elements generally takes a, a decently long time. We'll go ahead and go down here and do self.mbg destroy. Destroy just gets rid of the HUD element. And the reason we want to do that in this else is because this is called whenever our menu closes uh, and whenever we open it again. So we don't want to accidentally destroy or uh, draw the element twice. So we want to destroy it whenever the menu is closed. Let's go ahead and check our syntax. We've written a bit of code. Uh, there's an issue in here. Ah, I forgot an equal sign up here. As you can see, the syntax checker is very useful. There we go, that's fixed. Hopefully nothing else is bad. And we'll go ahead and try to inject. Uh, I think I still have MW3 selected, I don't know. I went to go test on Modern Warfare 2 uh, to make sure that all this worked on Modern Warfare 2, and it looks it's fine. Go ahead and hit OK. While this is loading, I just want to go ahead and apologize for not uploading yesterday. Uh, I was uh, out all day doing some moving stuff, and I... Uh, Got a new monitor for my setup, but I uh, had to figure out how to get this stream setup working again, so I wasn't able to record. But we're back on track today, and so hopefully I can keep uploading every other couple days. Okay, so we spawned in. Let's go ahead and see if our shader, if you remember, we aim in in melee to open our menu, and yep, there it is. There's a black box on our screen. We press E again, or whatever your melee key is, it goes away. All right. We'll go ahead and end the game, and we will move to the next part of the menu. Let's go ahead and just add a title. This is going to be the last thing we do today because the video is getting uh, pretty close to 15 minutes. Uh, self .m, I'm sorry, self.m title is equal to self text. Again, scroll down and just get that out of the way so we don't have these parameters everywhere. We'll go ahead and put our title of the menu. I'm just going to put menu base. You can put whatever you want. We're going to take the X and we're going to put it to negative 110, which means it's going to go left 110 units. The reason we're doing this, uh, the reason it's so much is we're actually going to align this by its center uh, so that we can basically put it in the middle of the uh, HUD element. Uh, I would do the math on the screen for you, but it would probably take another 10 minutes, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and do 30. This is going to bring it down 30 units. Uh, we're going to use a default font. You can choose uh, a different font if you want. The It's not going to be, you know, just any font. There are specific fonts for Call of Duty that you can use. So you can't just put, like, Comic Sans in here. That won't work. You have to use the proper fonts inside of the game. Uh, and I don't have a list of them on hand. I'm sure you can get them in the Infinity Loader Discord. Uh, we're going to use a 2.0 font scale, which is going to basically just double its size from what it would normally be. We're going to use the M text color define that we used for the color, and we're going to use the M text alpha for the alpha. Uh, then we're going to take a 1 sort because we want this to be on top of the background. And if you remember, the higher the sort, the uh, later it's drawn. We're going to change this to be center. This is going to align our text by its middle. Uh, you can change that if you want, but if you do, you're going to have to change the offset, so I would just leave it alone. Then we're going to basically just do a top right right here. 
and make sure we have our semicolon. And then we'll remember to destroy this in the uh, close menu so that it doesn't get stuck. And let's go ahead and check our syntax. Oh, unknown function call precast shader. That is not true. Uh, that must be a bug with infinity loader because, oh, maybe it's not. Aha, I misspelled this. Interesting. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to be. I put preash shader. So, cool. Uh, when we inject again, it should get rid of that. That's pretty embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. Let's see. Yeah, we're good now. Oh, well. All right. So, when we pull it up, we should get a black box and a title saying menu base. All right. And there we go. There's our menu base starting to pop up. Uh, we'll try to deviate a little bit from a shark space, but uh, we're not going to get too complicated because I want this to be kind of a first menu base series, not really a, uh, uh, you know, legendary coders menu base, you know. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Let me know in the comment section below uh, if you were enjoying this series. If you have any questions, ask me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.